sometimes the ugliest things have the most ordinary names. Collateral damage, enhanced interrogations. When you're scanning the news, these words barely even register. They're just words. But then you stop and you think about what they really mean. A seven-year-old girl murdered on her way home from school. A naked man alone drowning in the darkness. Gives you a bit of a different perspective. Here's another one for you. The Code of Silence. If you're wondering what I mean by the Code of Silence, here's the Cliff Notes version. It's when you witness something that you know is wrong, but you say nothing. I first encountered the Code of Silence as a recruit in the police academy, but you can find it everywhere. You hear your neighbor beating their kid, but you don't want to get involved. You witness your boss stealing money from the company, and you don't say a word. Because powerful people will punish you if you do. That is the code of silence. Now I'm going to say something a little controversial about the code of silence. And that is, I get it, really I do. Humans have a natural instinct to protect their own. That sense of camaraderie, it's one of the things I loved most about being a cop. We were all on the same team. But here's a question for you. What do you do when someone on your team messes up? Do you hold them accountable? Do you help them get better? Or do you remain silent and allow them to continue to abuse the trust and authority they have been given? I never thought I'd have to make that call. To be honest with you, I could never imagine myself in that kind of situation. But then, I joined the Chicago Police Department. As you may have heard, the south side of Chicago is one of the toughest parts of the city. It is also home to some of the poorest people in the entire nation. Most people would not choose to live in the housing projects here if they had any other options. Gangs run the streets, and the streets are filled with drug dealers selling everything from heroin to crack to cocaine. Tragically, the sound of gunfire and violent crimes were just a part of everyone's daily lives here. This is what I was thrown into as a rookie cop. I'll admit it was a little overwhelming at first, but I learned a lot from my fellow officers who had been on the street for years. They were doing their very best to make this little corner of the world better for everyone that lived here. No needles on the playground, no muggers in the stairwell. All of the things that most of us here take completely for granted. I was proud to be part of that. I talked to people. I got to know their stories and got to know them. I became the person and the officer deserving of their trust. The longer I spent on the job, though, the more I began to hear whispers about some of my fellow officers. I began to hear things that I did not want to believe. A man told me a story that I could not ignore. He had dates, times, names, everything. By this time, I had been on the job for over 14 years. And I could tell a lie from the truth. And this man, he was not lying. He said that a group of my fellow officers were running the projects like a private mafia kingdom. That these officers were shaking down drug dealers for protection money and 
falsely arresting all all of the people who refused to pay. Hundreds of innocent people went to prison for crimes they never committed. And if you can honestly believe this, they may have been the lucky ones. Others were beaten, robbed, and some of them, maybe, just maybe, were even murdered. For well over a decade, a group of rogue officers, some now promoted to bosses, had been allowed to operate with impunity without fear of prosecution, protected by the code of silence. Why hadn't anyone spoken out? Well, it goes back to what every new recruit is taught in the police academy. Never, ever go against a fellow officer. Regardless of what you know to be the truth, once an officer writes that report, whatever they put on that page, well, that becomes the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I couldn't accept that. I just couldn't. You see, I was raised by my grandmother. And she taught me to speak out against injustice wherever I found it. And that included the police department. She told me it was the right thing to do. And when you do what's right, things will always work out in the end. But boy, was I in for a shock when I told my supervisors about the abuse and criminal conduct happening under their command. No one wanted to listen. Not one single boss said, Wow, Shannon, we have got to put an end to this. No. Instead, I was told to forget it. To ignore the evidence that I discovered. And for my own good, keep my mouth shut. I tried going to other departments looking for anyone that would listen to me. I never found them. What I found is the code of silence was everywhere, and it was extremely powerful, preventing the truth from being heard, especially by the public. Eventually, I had to go all the way to the FBI for help. I became a whistleblower, leading an investigation that soon encompassed the very highest ranks of the Chicago Police Department. As you might imagine, this made me very, very unpopular. <laughs> the bosses ordered my fellow officers not to work with me, not to back me up on the street, even if my life depended on it. My bosses made threats against me. One told me, I hate to tell your daughter you're coming home in a box, referring to the grave danger I was in. The retaliation from inside my own department was so severe, I did not even feel human anymore. I was banned from the lockers, from the shower, and even denied access to the police bathrooms. A boss told me once, and I quote, that I could piss outside with the rest of the rats. Can you imagine that? The second I broke the code of silence, my life was changed forever. Maybe you're wondering, what does that mean? My life was changed forever. Well, here's the quick version. It meant that I lost most of my friends because most of my friends were officers. They didn't just stop talking to me, though. They actively hated my guts. It wasn't just my personal life that changed either. 
Eventually, I was forced out of a job that I absolutely loved, one that I earned and was really good at. The bosses made it very, very clear that I was all alone, unprotected, in this huge, violent world of criminals as an undercover cop. And if anything happened to me, oh well. I probably deserved it. For all of you sitting here today, that probably sounds a little extreme. And I hope it does because it was extreme. But you have to remember to my fellow officers, I had just committed the worst sin a cop can ever commit. I had violated the Brotherhood of Blue. The second I went to an outside department to report internal corruption, I was immediately an outcast. I had crossed the thin blue line. I was now the enemy. But you know what? Despite all of that, I did not give up. I did not take the path of least resistance. For me, There was no choice. I knew that if I did not continue to speak out, there would never be justice for hundreds and hundreds of victims. Another thing. Whistleblowers lose everything. And I don't think that's right. All of us here today We know how precious the truth is. We should do absolutely everything in our power to protect it and to protect and defend those who are brave enough to tell it. It took me years to expose the code of silence. But in 2016, The mayor of Chicago himself was forced to admit that the Chicago Police Department does have a code of silence that allows officers to commit and cover up illegal acts and wrongdoings committed by their own. This is something that the people of the Southside Housing Projects of Chicago had known their entire lives that a gang of corrupt officers had abused their authority and the department, the police department, despite receiving hundreds of complaints, did absolutely nothing to stop them. Finally, finally, the silence had been broken. But that's not where this story ends. There are still hundreds of innocent people suffering behind bars because of the code of silence. That is why today I am working with a pro bono legal clinic called the Exoneration Project. Together, we are trying to help everyone who has been wrongfully convicted by the code of silence get their lives back. I believe they deserve to get their lives back. They deserve to be free. Here's another thing I believe. I am not a hero. (laughs) I'm not. I am just one ordinary person who refused to look the other way. Was I scared? To death? Did I have doubts? Absolutely every single day. But even when my entire world was crashing down around me, I knew I was doing the right thing. And that gave me strength. It gave me courage. If you are ever face to face with a code of silence in your life, I really hope you remember my story. I hope you remember that you, one single ordinary person, 
can do enormous amounts of good in this world. One right decision, then another, and another by each and every one of us can lead to real change. All of us here, we know how precious the truth is. We must do everything we can to protect it and to protect those who are brave enough to tell it. For whistleblowers like me, we lose things we can never get back. Our career, our friends, family, and maybe even our lives. That has to change. It has to change at the beginning. If we want better officers, we need better training. And that starts day one in the police academy. We must train our officers the importance of reporting the truth. Not because they might get caught lying on camera, no. But because that is the very basic quality necessary to become a cop in the first place. Honesty. We must train our officers that reporting corruption by law enforcement is now their job. And that officers entrusted with the authority to serve and protect our communities will be held responsible. We must give officers a safe environment once they're cops to report the internal corruption. No officer should ever have to walk in my shoes. No officer should ever become the next Shannon Spaulding. An officer should never have to choose between doing the right thing, which is his job, or losing his job, his family, and maybe even his life. We must have the unions protect all of its officers. They must provide whistleblower protection for each and every cop. Because right now, whistleblowers, they're not protected, not by their union and not by their contract. And that has to change. Repairing the damage done by the code of silence, I'm not gonna lie, it is not going to be easy, but it is absolutely achievable. We all know what we have to do. We have to back up our words with actions. We have to become involved. Where do we start? Well, by what we're doing right now. First, all of us, we get together. And then, together, all of us, we get to work. Thank you.